What's up, everybody? It is the Best Spot Kiss Move, and I'm back with another video. So it is Monday. PlayStation has revealed more about their new uh, PlayStation Plus subscription. Well, new old, the new version of their PlayStation Plus subscription. And I must admit, their uh, subscription service does look a bit appetizing to me. Now, if you are primarily a PlayStation dude and you buy your games like you say you do, then None of this is probably going to make a difference to you. See me, I have a PlayStation 5, I had a PS4, and I've only purchased PlayStation exclu uh, exclusive. On the PS5 side of things, there's only a, not even a handful of games that I've actually got for the PS5 that because uh, I don't typically buy um, third party there, and I've gotten all the exclusive that I wanted uh, to play, such as you know the Spider Man's. Uh, uh, damn, what else did I play on that? Uh, Death Loop. Um, I played uh, Ratchet and Clank. I beaten that. I played Returnal, can't stand it. Um, but I'm going to ex uh, explain to you guys why, you know, I'm actually looking more to likely upgrade my PS Plus subscription to at least the extra tier because some of the content um, that they got coming does seem compelling. And they're not, you know, based on the look of the things that the third party games that they are getting, they are getting quality stuff. Now, some of this stuff has been in Game Pass, but like things that... Um, are coming in here are actually uh quite surprising so let's uh read off with uh nick mcguire i guess he's uh he's head of operations or whatever um in the playstation blog post he says it's almost here our new playstation plus subscription is launching soon and we are pleased to share with you an early look at some of the games that will be included during the lunch time frame we announced in march there will be three benefit plans to choose from all with exciting games to play um here's a look at games to come please note titles may vary local market some title etc etc all right so we see here the tiers right now i think all of us would be considered under the essential tier if i'm not mistaken but you got um i think essential tier i forgot how much it costs uh, for the essential tier but i think the extra tier is the same price as xbox game pass ultimate and deluxe is like i think like 17 bucks 17.99 or something like that um so let's look at it so it says ps4 and ps5 game catalog now playstation plus extra and premium deluxe plans we're um, we're focused on adding high quality titles into playstation plus services for players to enjoy i'm pleased to share a selection of the content that will be available for playstation plus extra and premium deluxe plans playstation.com will be updated with the games list when it launches in your region. So this thing is gonna be launching in the um, eastern part of the country, uh, part of the earth. First, it'll make its way to the United States um, June 13th, and I think some in Europe, so I think the last place, I think uh, the end of June. But um, PlayStation, first party games like Alienation, you know, I'm not a fan of that stuff. Bloodborne, I already, it's, uh, Bloodborne, Concrete Genie, Days Gone, Dead Nation, Death Stranding Director's Cut, so that's the PS, you know, the PS4 and PS5 edition. Demon Souls, that's pretty good. That so there, there's gonna be recent games in here. Destruction All Stars, this damn near should have been free to play. It's free to play, isn't it? No. Uh, Everybody's Golf, Ghost of Tsushima's Director's Cut, that's a good one. God of War, Gravity Rush 2, Gravity Rush Remastered, Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, we have uh. Infamous First Light, Infamous Second Sun, Knack, Little Big Planet 3, Local Roco Remaster, Local Roco 2, Marvel Spider Man, Spider Man Miles Morales, Matterfall, Medieval, Pat Patapon Remastered, Patapon 2 Remastered, Rezzle Gun, Returnal, Shadow of the Colossus, Tearaway Unfolded, The Last Guardian, The Last of Us Remastered, The Last of Us, Last of Us Left Behind, Until Dawn. Uncharted, the Nathan Drake collection, Uncharted 4 Thieves in, Uncharted The Lost Legacy, and Wipeout Omega collection. So a lot of their games, their recent releases, all the PlayStation um, 4 hits, a lot of these games, these PlayStation 4 hits are actually already there, believe it or not. So uh, the cool thing is a lot of these games got uh, boosted up to run at 60 frames per second on the PlayStation 5. Demon Souls would be like a game. See, now I have my eyes on Demon Souls. I would actually... I, I, the subscription would I would download it and, and, and play it. Um, same thing with um, Death Stranding. I've never purchased the game. I was contemplating getting it on PC, but I, I couldn't 
dare myself to do it. Just think the game looks too boring, but I'll give it a try on the PlayStation 5. I know it's currently at 60 frames per second right now. Um, the infamous games I already played on a PS4, Zero Dawn, I've already played the Little Big Planets and stuff like that. I've done, I've done that game. So there are um, a couple games in here that um, I find extremely, you know, interesting, and that will provide a value to me and that was the first thing that I was looking at at least from the first party from the first party output like i said i've historically purchased playstation exclusives um but so the ones that stand out for me honestly is the um uh death stranding uh demon souls and um i feel like I, there's another one that i'm um that is missing so I mean, this is worth a sub. Is it a worth like a lifetime sub or subbing out for a year? I mean, probably not, but it is worth like, you know, a month or uh, two so far. But I think things get interesting with the third party partners. So you got Ashen, which I think that was a part of Game Pass. I've played that. Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Now, this is a big deal for me. You guys know I am a, um, I, I like Ubisoft games and I love the new uh, Assassin's Creed games. This reason why this is surprising to me because Xbox had the marketing rights for Assassin's Creed Valhalla. It was the, the headline game. It was the game that they were promoting with the Xbox series. So the fact that we're this is going to be coming to PlayStation Plus day one and this game never appeared on Xbox Game Pass, it is kind of like... I mean, I would I would actually play... Now, I, I beat the crap out of this game in terms of I got so many hours into it and I'm already like in, in the middle of the expansions. I would go and play this on PlayStation, but I believe if I log into my Ubisoft Plus, I should get all my stats and stuff. So I would, if it unlocks the trophies, I would do that. Um, so I would, I would replay an Assassin's Creed um, uh, Valhalla on um, the PlayStation Five. So that's interesting. Batman: Arkham Knight's pretty old. Celeste, I'm not worried about that. City Skylines Control Ultimate Edition. That I think was already a PlayStation Plus game. Dead Cells. Far Cry 3 Remaster, Far Cry 4, yeah, a lot of these um, Ubisoft games, um, cool thing. Now, I I seen Hip Hop Gamer tweet about, um, and we'll read about it, remastered uh, uh, engine, so he, so we'll see, because on Xbox, these games I've, like Far Cry 4 and, and 3 and whatnot, these games are all FPS boosted to run at a higher frame rate. Uh, um, For Honor, Hollow Knight, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, interesting. Cause that's that's actually a big deal. That's that's a it, that was a big deal for being on obviously Xbox Game Pass, but it now it's on PlayStation. So this is looking more an, an attractive right now. There's a as I'm reading this list, you got Mortal Kombat 11, um, NBA 2K22, Outer Wilds, okay, Red Dead Redemption 2, Resident Evil, Soul Calibur. The Artful Escape, okay. The Crew 2, Tom Clancy's The Division. All right. Now, I'll, now as far as... As far as, like, now, this would be the, the a part of the plan that's a part, uh, that's equivalent to Xbox Game Pass and Ultimate in terms of cost. Right now, it's, 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 it's almost an equivalent. The biggest difference right now, though, between Xbox and PlayStation Plus, and I can't even comment on PlayStation because they, they might get day and date games that just won't be for PlayStation. It'll be from potentially second party indies and whatnot. And if they have that, that's going to be something that make it like very competitive for Xbox Game Pass. The thing that Xbox has over PlayStation is that their major first party games are in the service day and date, like their big uh, AAA. Now, the, the problem with that is um, they had. There isn't any uh, so far that we know of um, this year, and that and I think Xbox Game Pass will get its due. It'll be you know significantly better starting like next year when their games start coming out. So, but this is uh, an attractive thing, and and from what I know, th these aren't like st a stagnated list of games. There will be updates. There will be getting additions every month, and if their addition is going to be this oppressive, which I think is comparable. Um, to to Game Pass, and the only thing you're missing is the Xbox games. Um, yeah, Xbox is going to have a. Um, they're going to have to like kind of hustle hard with their Game Pass um, promotions and getting certain games in there that aren't likely to come under. And then that's where I feel like you kind of have to get stingy with um, 
the Activision and the, the Beth, Bethesda thing, their games cannot show up in this service whatsoever. Um, because I think that's what give obviously Xbox the head when C- Call of Duty and you know the Elder Scrolls and all that stuff is and Game Pass and then PlayStation you get the PlayStation Classics, their old games and then some current uh, third party games and new indies. Uh, classic games catalog. Now this is exclusive to the PlayStation Plus Premium, um, and at this point I really don't care at this point. So, but this adds out the um, you get like the PlayStation One and PlayStation Two games. Um, some uh, PS3 games, I believe, from what I can see. But from what I see, they, these are like ports. They're um, they're like PS3 ports, and then you get the PS Now streaming options, which I could do without, honestly. Um, you get um, the uh, limited game trials. They're gonna give you game trials of For- Forbidden West, logs, uh, Uncharted uh, Legacy of Thieves collection. Shit, I'll do. I'll freaking play the trial on the PlayStation 5 just to see what the next-gen version feel like and then buy the full game on PC. Cyberpunk, Farming Simulator, Tiny Tina's Wonderland. Okay, WWE 2K22. I See, that that is actually pretty good. So they got so they got 2K. I'm, I'm noticing that they have 2K, 2K games in a back pocket as far as uh, doing some of these deals. Um, but yeah, man, uh, this is actually a worthy co- competitor to Xbox Game Pass. And I'm actually interested because they have a fair amount of uh, uh, third-party games, a fair amount of uh, indies, and they're recent. They're not like you know old. The whole PlayStation Now stuff, the streaming stuff, I'm not really interested in. Um, and um, the PlayStation Now, a lot of these games from PlayStation, the first party, were games that were already a part of the service uh, by buying a PS5. So. A lot of these games, and even the streaming stuff, is bolstered by Backlog. They just rebranded and re-offered to you in a different subscription tier, which is fine. Uh, but it's good to see other third-party partners on board. I said the Ubisoft thing was a shocker because we knew that Ubisoft was coming to Xbox and Xbox Game, Pla- Game Pass. It looks like the Ubisoft Classics is coming to PlayStation. But the fact that it was, it was announced for Xbox first, but it's coming to PlayStation First, and the fact that they're getting key games that Xbox had like marketing for, and they're these key games like Valhalla is not in Game Pass. Now, Valhalla being in Game Pass wouldn't really matter to me. Same thing with Assassin's Creed Origins. I think I'm looking more so for that Assassin's Creed Origins to go into Game Pass because I think it's coming the day they release the 60 FPS update. And once they do that, I'm going back to Origins and I will replay that game from start to finish because I think it's probably one of the best in the recent three games. But um, what are you guys thoughts on this new PlayStation Plus? Is it really like, you know, is it uh, I've seen people say some stupid stuff um, uh, on Twitter saying like it's like, you know, RIP Game Pass or it's better than Game Pass. I don't think I wouldn't say it's better than Game Pass, but it is a a heavy consideration for competition. It's more competitive with Game Pass. I think it's it's more of an uh, attractive uh, when you look at the libraries of what's available and assuming like, you know, PlayStation's partners up with 2K a lot. They got Ubisoft and Square Enix is going to be with them and whatnot. So, um, yeah, it's a, definitely a worthy competitor. I think I would subscribe. I'm not sure if I'll be a, a long time a subscriber like um, what I am to uh, Game Pass. But there's a couple games so far I can start off with like there I can easily subscribe for a month or two and get, you know, my money's worth. To get you know some games out the way and then we'll see how they maintain that but uh that's the video guys hope you guys enjoy hit the like button hit the subscribe button and um i'll see you guys in the next video peace